So uh, uh, we have a, a talk this morning uh, on the world's most dangerous, well, I think the world's most dangerous file format, <laughs> uh, which uh, uh, I'm sure you all know and love, uh, perfect for spear phishing. Uh, so uh, I give you Julia, Julia Wolf and uh, PDF. Oh my God. Oh. All right, so I'm, I'm Julia, like you said. Uh, I work at FireEye and I do malware analysis and whatever else needs to be analyzed, basically, research. Um, so uh, this is my first time speaking at CCC and I'm amazed this many people are awake at 11 in the morning. But uh, so how many of you here have ever, or how many of you have not heard of, the, of PDF? Okay, good. <laughs> um, so how many people know that you can play a uh, QuickTime movie or render 3D animation inside of a PDF document. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cover a few of the features uh, or a somewhat slightly, not quite exhaustive list of uh, features uh, that are in, in, uh, in the PDF for, um, spec and, uh, and a couple other interesting things about it too. This is the basic outline following. So, um, Icabat was written back, mostly back in the 90s. Uh, it's about, f about 15 million lines of code. Uh, and to put that in perspective, uh, Firefox is about 2.7 million lines of code. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure the 15 million includes like Flash and QuickTime or something, I don't know. But it's, it's got a lot of stuff built into it. Um, so uh, PDF was, was sort of a reaction to PostScript. Uh, there's a couple of problems with, with PostScript. Uh, it's, it's basically fourth with a bunch of graphics operators. So in order to uh, display page 100, you had to execute the code from pages 1 through 99 first. Uh, and it could take forever because it's actually a fully Turing language. It, you know, it may ray trace a, a sphere on a checkerboard or something while you're uh, somewhere between pages 1 and 100. So uh, what PDF uh, is is basically just a bunch of objects uh, connected together in a kind of a tree. Um, it's, uh, it looks kind of like this. Uh, you can write it, it's all basically 7-bit uh, ASCII, although it's 8-bit clean. Um, and uh, this is an object, it says, it's a page, and it's this big. Uh, this is an action, it's a JavaScript action, like it says, and that's the JavaScript that gets run. So it's, it's actually pretty easy to read. Um, the, uh, one of the other things is, is uh, the philosophy behind PDF changed a bit, Shift has been shifting over the years also, and, and Acrobat has, uh, I mean, Adobe is, um, is also sort of, of, of uh, conceptually recast PDF as being a container format uh, that is sort of an archive that you can put a bunch of other files into, and they get the exact same files back out again sometimes later. Uh, so remember that. <laughs> um, the, uh, Adobe submitted the, uh, the PDF 1.7 spec to the ISO f to make it an official standard. It's uh, ISO 32000-1 colon 2008 is the current revision. And like right at the beginning, uh, I mean, the, the, the reason I did this talk was I, like sometime last year, I actually sat down and read through the entire spec. And the entire time I was like, oh my God, what were they thinking? Um, and and I, I told uh, FX, it's like, oh, I want to give a talk at PH Neutral. And he's like, uh, okay, and so I had to come up with something, so I talked about this. Uh, at the very, like right at the very beginning of the, of the, uh, the spec, it says that there's nothing in this document for validating the, the conformance of a PDF file or a reader to the spec. Uh, and that's, 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 that's extremely true, because there is in fact, for many PDF files, there is in fact no way to know what the correct interpretation of the file is. So the, um, oops, so quick list of features. This is actually all in the ISO spec. It, it, it enumerates this stuff. So you can do OpenGL, uh, and, and you can have uh, like JavaScript events attached to various actions on the, on the 3D objects and so forth. Uh, there's a, a database connector, it's like ODBC. Uh, and there's a funny thing in the spec about that too. It says that, uh, that there's no security for any of the databases uh, that, that the user has access to. It's up to the database administrator to keep all their data secure because uh, PDF can just, has access to all the databases that the user reading the PDF has access to, apparently. So um, you, can embed, uh, you can embed a flash file, run it, uh, play sound and, and video. There's a, there's a full-blown um, XML form 
uh, based thing that, that does, uh, it has like a, its own macro language called form, cl form calc, which is another Turing complete language included in P PostScript, I mean PDF. Uh, it, it generates barcodes. Uh, you can do uh, RSA public key signing of the data and so forth. Um, there's, uh, there's also this, I, was, I saw, bought it this like the day before yesterday. Uh, one of the special barcode types is an RFID type, and it's, it's not nearly as exciting as it sounds. It's, there's apparently certain printers that, instead of printing a, a barcode or something, will, will print the information to an RFID tag. But there's an actual data type defined for it. Um, so JavaScript, there's, there's uh, JavaScript now in PDF. Uh, it, um, it, it has a full XML RPC library. Uh, you can, uh, JavaScript running, when uh, the PDF's running inside of a browser, it can send events back up to the JavaScript. The JavaScript in the PDF can send events back up to JavaScript running in the browser, and vice versa. Um, there's, uh, you can do a little bit of writing to disk. Older versions, uh, it w it's, a, it's much more restricted now, uh, but like in old, old versions of Acrobat, you could like read and write to any file on disk. Uh, there's a uh, globally, globally persistent, hang on, my, the microphone's falling off. Uh, there's a uh, globally persistent data. Um, it's uh, I, the um, what's his name? Uh, the guy who's doing Evercookie. I, I mentioned this to him also because it's it's one of the many other places you can store persistent data. Uh, these these are a bit more restricted now. Uh, this one has like a local origin restriction on it or something like that. So um, there's a uh, uh, Adobe has some sort of uh, search index thing that they the PDF interfaces with. There's there's DRM. Uh, of course, and uh, you can um, uh, you know attach arbitrary files, uh, have a, a and have a PDF that renders completely differently depending on whether you're viewing it on a screen, on a printer or a printout or in a slideshow mode. And uh, there is a so. So last time when I was reading through the, uh, the, the spec, about 400 pages in, uh, I came across this. And uh, here I'll, I'll uh, highlight it a bit. It's, it basically says that if you, uh, there's this particular action type that if you, if you pass the name of a, of a file uh, or a program basically, it will execute it with the arbitrary command line ar arguments that you give it. And I, I was reading this and I'm like, like, like they, they, they couldn't have done that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, somebody would have noticed uh, that, you know, blindly executing an arbitrary program with arbitrary arguments, uh, you know, might not be a good thing. Uh, but it turns out, so like if you actually put like a command.exe in there, it would have run. And actually, uh, yes, actually it would. Uh, it, let me see if I pronounce his name right. Uh, DJ Stevens. Um, Made, you know, publicized this back in spring, and, and a Adobe has sort of fixed it. Uh, they, they put up a big message box, box now saying, warning, do you really want to run command.exe? Oh, yes or no, Bef before it does this now. But uh, the funny thing is that, that uh, there were at least two PDF readers that did this. So no, there had to be at least two people who read the spec and thought this was a good enough idea to implement it in their PDF reader without realizing what this meant. So, let's see. Uh, in older versions, like 1.5, uh, there was a whole bunch of stuff you could do through, from the JavaScript that's, that's a bit more restricted now, quite restricted. Uh, add and remove menu items uh, from the program and toolbar, toolbar icons. Uh, send click events to them so you could like add a menu item and click on it. Uh, read and write files on disk, make arbitrary network connections, you know, send email. Uh, call JavaScript and other documents. Uh, it's interesting, you can actually, uh, the code to do it looks kind of like this. You can either read it off the local system or off a URL and then just call some function that's defined in, in some JavaScript blob inside of one of those. So um, there's, uh, in current versions, there's a privileged context in which this stuff works. And it's, uh, it's a little bit, there's not very much information in the spec about it. There's apparently some sort of uh, X509 certificate uh, authority uh, that, has apparently some keys somewhere, I don't know, uh, that are trusted to sign PDFs. And if a PDF is signed w with one of these keys, then you get to do all that stuff again. Or if it's also running locally, or also you can just go into the preferences and turn off the uh, restrictions on it also, which is how I did a bit of the testing on this. The, uh, the syntax, like I was saying, it's all 7-bit ASCII. It's pretty, uh, you can actually sit down and write a PDF file with a text editor. 
Um, it's got Boolean types, number types. Uh, strings are uh, bounded by parentheses. Hex strings are, uh, they've got greater than, less than signs. Um, and if it's a, an odd number, they did actually specify in the, in, the, uh, in the standard, if it's an odd number of uh, characters in the hex string, then the last one is a zero. So uh, names are, start with a slash, and arrays are uh, inside of square brackets. Uh, dictionaries are just associative arrays, so uh, foo is, is equal to one, two, three, and bar is equal to true. And uh, streams are kind of like giant strings. Uh, it's, it's basically when you include like a, uh, a big graphics image or, or a font or whatever. Uh, it's a lot easier to do this instead of, you know, escaping parentheses or whatever. Uh, there's a null object, although anything that doesn't exist is, is automatically a null. Um, and then uh, objects. Uh, where you can just take any of this stuff and stick it between that, and then you can use it, uh, make references to it with the R operator. And so if you have a, an object that's a string like hello world to er, and then you make a reference to it here, so example is equal to hello world. Uh, it's equivalent syntactically to just putting the original data uh, in that spot. So um, the thing is that it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't uh, do it at parse time, so uh, if, you, if you define that object to be like oops, 12, that doesn't actually substitute. Similarly, uh, this doesn't work, because uh, these don't really exist at parse time, but if you do it this way, then it does. Um, and uh, anyway, so I, I suspect it's, it's, I haven't actually like reversed the actual parser or anything. I'm just like feeding it uh, PDFs. But uh, anyway, I suspect it, it does the evaluation when it actually goes to use the object. Uh, and it, which is probably a good thing because if they, if they hadn't, they would have accidentally reinvented Lisp. Um, I don't know, actually, I haven't actually tested other PDF readers to see if there are any readers that actually do the, uh, the reference evaluation at parse time. If that's the case, then you could actually, then they are Turing complete. But, uh, you know, oh, streams. There's also uh, a lot of um, uh, ways of encoding a stream. Uh, was the, the other advantage of a stream, besides from being a giant string, is you can compress it. Uh, and you can compress it one of a 16 different ways, all simultaneously in any order you want. Uh, and, uh, and there's also an encryption thing. And there's apparently, uh, in older versions, uh, possibly still in current ones, if you uh, RC4 uh, encrypt a stream with a, with a null password, Acrobat's smart enough to figure out that uh, it was a null password and it'll silently decrypt it without prompting the user or anything. So uh, there's a lot of things like that in Acrobat. Um, strings, names, uh, yeah, you can, you can put in uh, various uh, hex uh, escaping with the uh, pound sign in names. Uh, C style backslashes work. Uh, there's, uh, so Metasploit uses a bunch of these tricks uh, when uh, generating PDFs, because um, uh, GA like, wrote a blog post about it two years ago or something, so everyone does this now. Um, graphics, so the graphics operators are also completely another, completely different language. Uh, of their own also, and they generally they follow the format of having an open, opening and closing tags and where you kind of shift into a particular state, like, oh, this is the text rendering state, uh, and then a bunch of uh, operators, and the operators are basically kind of fourth style where you've, uh, you know, postfix or whatever. Um, looks kind of like that. Anyway, I haven't spent a lot of time uh, digging into that JavaScript. So JavaScript, uh, all of the metadata in the document is both readable and writable from JavaScript. Writable. Um, some of it, uh, actually, some of the metadata is read only in reader. Uh, you need like the publisher or whatever to uh, modify some of it. But um, there's a lot of places to hide data in a PDF. If you're, say, going to obfuscate your, your PDF, uh, you can you know, stick part of it in an icon or in the legal warnings uh, or, or the links or whatever. This, this has to do with like the DRM stuff um, and so, so forth. Some of this is kind of metadata that's you figure out when you actually render the thing, like the number of words on a page. Um, some of these, actually, if you're, if you're using these for obfuscation, uh, the, uh, and you're trying to figure out what the, answer, what the output of this function is, if you're, if you're not at running this thing in Acrobat, uh, some of these can be a little bit difficult because uh, things like this function return the coordinates of the bounding 